Hello everyone and welcome to another Factorio base tour. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me today. It has been a little bit since our last base tour so it seemed time to do another one and uh, this one now I know every time I say this one's super cool we you know I'm super excited those things are true but one thing that is very true about this base that uh, is not necessarily true about the other bases I've I've reviewed is I don't think we have seen a base in this entire series that is like this base. This base is different than all of the other bases and I am super excited to get into it uh, because this is something that I have wanted to see and uh, just haven't really received a save with it until now and it is pretty magnificent to say the least. Uh, so this base is submitted by uh, Carid or Karad. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the pronunciation. I apologize if I mess it up. Uh, but this is a train bus base. Um, so this concept, a lot of you may be familiar with. If you're not familiar with it, basically, uh, in summary, it just it is similar to a main bus, but it uses trains instead of belts. So obviously, it's on a much larger scale. Uh, instead of having you know your belts of materials in a main bus, you have trains like like a main train line bus. And then trains split off of that to delivery stations, which, you know, deliver directly into builds. So it's basically just replacing belts with trains um, at, for the main bus section. And this has, um, I would say, probably one of the most satisfying uh, to watch and look at uh, rail systems in any of the bases we've looked at. Um, so let's let's get started here. Uh, we, we have a little troop of Spidertrons here at the start. We're starting, and we are near the uh, mall. Make everything, and uh, this base is is very large. Um, th this make everything is actually huge uh, in comparison. <laughs> like this is way bigger than even just a, a normal base. Um, so so this here is just the make everything. Um, like from here up to where we are, this is just the make everything. This is not even the main production in the base. Um, in terms of production, this base does about 3,000 science per minute. Uh, technically, it is built to be able to do about 3,600, uh, but it's not running fully or properly as intended, I think, to due to some train jams. Uh, so we will take a look at maybe what's causing those train issues. But uh, let's, let's hop into it. Let's look at production first off. Let's just start with that so you can get some numbers in your head. Uh, we have, you know, 240,000 iron a minute, over 100,000 main circuits a minute, almost 200,000 copper a minute. Um, if, if we take a look at our minute graph, and now some of these sciences are at 3.6. In fact, most of them are. So it's potentially uh, only a problem sometimes, or maybe when uh, Carrot wrote the synopsis for me, um, which is what that info I mentioned earlier was from, um, maybe they fixed it after this uh, and then sent me the save, because they did send me the save, I think, sometime later. Uh, so... Uh, it is actually now running at 3.6k science per minute. Uh, so, so that's what we're going to say that space does. Uh, it's it's a lot. Uh, and this base has about 175 hours on it. Uh, if we look at our all time here to start with, um, almost half a billion iron, 376 million copper, more um, almost a quarter billion green circuits, 50 million red circuits, Two million steel, quite a lot. Uh, science packs, if we look at the science packs, uh, pretty much five million science of every type. And we're currently on mining productivity 69. Um, this is unmodded. There are no mods in the save whatsoever. There was no resource, like a creative placing or anything like that. This is completely legit. Now, let's look at the map. I know this is something you guys have been waiting for. Check this out, folks. This is ridiculous. Um, so this is the, the the production area with the train bus, and I want to look very closely at this. However, what really caught my eye, and maybe caught your eye, is this here. Look how satisfying this is. I could truly sit here. I'm not going to make you guys do this, um, but I could truly sit here and watch this for probably 30 minutes straight. Uh, this is just incredibly satisfying just watching the trains zip through here. Uh, all the trains in here are 1-4 trains, uh, from what I can tell, uh, single-headed, and uh, that's what's tra transporting all the materials. And these things are just cruising through here, just endless, endless trains, guys. And uh, I know we love to see this. You know, we all love trains. This is just absolutely fantastic. And this is built 
in an interesting way. Instead of a normal type of main line, uh, what this actually has is these seven, I believe this is seven, two, four, six, seven um, lines. And each one is actually basically like a dedicated line from my understanding. Um, so there's one for iron, there's one or two for iron potentially. Um, yeah, there's two for iron, two for copper, one for, uh, and then I think maybe two for like coal and water and stone and like all the other materials. Um, so that's six, and then there's a, a seventh one for um, like maintenance and like player transport and stuff like that, and I think artillery potentially. Um, so this top one looks to be the maintenance one. There's not like there's not a lot of trains running on it. So it's seven lines each direction. Uh, you can see they they even have crossed lakes with this, um, and I'm just following this. So this is actually does create a loop, um, and it does have the potential to go upwards all the way up and I th I'm pretty sure this is artillery line here um, this one just stops but um, it looks like this could potentially turn onto here and then go into artillery uh, well another thing guys will notice is there are a ton of trees on this map and <laughs> another unique thing is Kurt actually set the trees to max uh, they said they really like the visual on the map of a ton of trees and the pollution slowing effect of it uh, now, personally, that would drive me nuts. However, I will admit that visually, it looks really cool. It looks really nice. I mean, you can't really see the rails, but seeing the trains zip through this forest is pretty cool. And then also, somewhere in here, I don't remember quite where it was, uh, this section, looking at all these, like, dead trees, or, or just, I don't know if they're dead or they just don't have leaves, um, but seeing the tra uh, trains go through this is actually really cool as well. Um... You know, and then of course, cross the water, just finished our research. And also having just the base and stuff built kind of within this big forest. Um, so it also runs on nuclear. There's 21 gigawatts worth of nuclear power. Uh, this is what it's run on. Uh, they said they don't really like solar and the idea of having solar spread out through, uh, throughout the map. So they went completely nuclear, which did hurt the UPS a little bit, although we are still, at least on my computer, a fair bit below the point where we would start dropping below 60 UPS. So despite the nuclear power and stuff, we're still in a good spot. Currently using about 17 gigawatts of power, uh, which is pr quite a lot, really. Uh, we have our artillery outposts spread throughout here, which I mean to look at closer here in a little bit. We have our, our uh, resource outposts, and these are direct insertion or direct mining insertion. Uh, so. It is speed modules in the miners and speed beacons mining directly into trains. Uh, now, they are, this is really fast. Obviously, this is speed on top of speed. Uh, but the reason they can do this is because of the mining productivity. You know, mining productivity 70 is providing basically, once we finish this, 700% mining productivity, uh, effectively making all these patches seven times uh, richer than they are, or providing seven times yield. So, uh, they can afford to have this be super fast and not productivity like with modules uh, because between the productivity and the speed uh, that's needed to fill these trains fast enough. And you can see just how quickly this is filling this train. Um, this needs to get to 2,000 to be full and it is just cranking. Like it's, you can see their storage uh, already halfway full in these wagons, which, you know, is definitely what you want to see filling up really quick like that. Um, so all the outposts, basically the same, um, just direct... Uh, mining into trains here, into the one fours. Uh, now let's take a look at the base. So we'll start at the front to make everything. This is the hub, is what they're calling it. Uh, and uh, again, one four trains. This is what we're using throughout. And uh, this is kind of an inline stacker uh, in a sense, where instead of having stacker lanes like right next to each other, I mean they kind of do, but they're also just a lot stacking train to train. Uh, which in this case can work because it's all pulled through. The trains aren't trying to leave back the way they came, so this isn't really causing an issue. Um, so how these train bus systems work, because we don't see this often. Like I said, this is the first base, I believe, in this entire base tour series where we've seen an actual train bus. Um, so these are very interesting and uh, fairly tricky to build, I would say, um, and, and make run correctly, especially at this scale. Uh, so they unload the trains, you know, as you normally would. It's like four inserters per unloading 
Uh, and we have quite a few lanes of ore here that it wants us to send and done. There's quite a lot. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus four. There's 12 lanes of iron. I would assume uh, there's actually even more of that, I think, than co uh, of copper. I think it's 16 lanes of copper potentially, and then everything else delivered all in line here, which looks really cool first off. It all crosses underneath. So just as you would cross... Uh, you know, the, the, the main uh, belts in your bus. This is crossing, oh man, look at this, train race. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. The trains here are just super cool. I almost want to kind of just follow this. Like, isn't this cool? Um, and once we get to a junction, you'll see some of these guys split off. Potentially, it looks like they're all going farther down the line, but like, like I said, guys, I could just watch this for probably 30 minutes. This is extremely satisfying. Oh, here, here's some inbound ones coming in. Um, Anyway, back to what I was saying. We'll just watch the trains as they go by here. Um, it will go underneath the rails, just as it go, would go under main bus belts, um, and then goes up to the production here. And this is a lot of production. This is the smelting here. So we have copper, iron, steel. In terms of the builds themselves, it's uh, actually fairly similar, it looks like, to the kind of belt build I did in my Tightening the Belt base. Um, I'm not saying it's the same build. It's not. Um, but generally, it reminds me of that, uh, where it's, you know, utilizing undergrounds under the inserters to kind of get multiple lanes of ore in and then multiple lanes of plate out. Um, so uh, this is pretty good. You know, we're undergrounding here. These are coming through some side loading here to get it on both sides. Um, and then it looks like the end thing here, we're actually outputting three, I think or two and a half uh, lines of uh, plate here, which all combines down the copper, I would assume is exactly the same, which it is. Um, and then steel is a little bit different, of course. They are inputting, uh, well, it's, it's actually not that different. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the plate comes in basically the same way the ore does over here, uh, but then obviously steel, it's a lot takes a lot more to fill a belt, so they're actually only outputting one belt, um, which is still quite a lot. Uh, under using a red underground here for the belt weaving capability and then this all comes through goes up to circuits so this is all of our circuits uh green circuits red circuits blue circuits uh, the green circuit build all these are like th this all seems to be a beacon um pretty standard here using some chests actually to transfer to do a direct insertion type of setup with these um which is actually pretty cool I don't see this super often, but it absolutely works. I do this, uh, but just in a different form where I will place the machines kind of side by side like this and then put the chest in that little corner that's available and they're just doing it you know, directly um, in between, which totally works. Um, and it's good because they've managed to actually get their spacing right too so that all the beacons are hitting all the machines evenly, which can be tricky when you, when you add in chests here. Uh, so we get a lot of circuits. We have, uh, I'm trying to count the final amount here. It whew, looks like, uh, I'm, I'm not sure guys. This is, this is a lot. This is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 belts of circuits. Seems like an odd number, but um, definitely not an odd. It's definitely, it's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, definitely missed one. Um, but yeah, so 18, it looks like belts of circuits, which is a lot, these are all express belts. And then it splits off to, you know, the red circuits. Uh, these builds are uh, using quite a bit of belt weaving, which you, which does make sense for red circuits. You know, you do need to get a lot of materials in and out uh, within a fairly small space when you use beacons like this, so Let's find the cable. So the cable is pulling copper and then it's outputting a cable here, actually two different ways. Side loading on this, which undergrounds to here. Um, so this is side loading on this close side and then the inserter automatically puts on the far side and it comes over this way and undergrounds and within that same space, they're actually outputting the red circuits using a red belt going the opposite direction. So that's pretty dang cool. Uh, and then we have Plastic and circuits, just sharing about here, pretty straightforward. 
Uh, the ratio they're using here is one to six. I'm not sure if that's correct when you put in modules. I feel like it changes. I could be wrong though. Um, this is the ratio non-modeled, uh, but it is working, it seems like. Um, so then we come over to blue circuits, which have uh, actually sharing an input and output belt on the same belt, which you don't see super often. Uh, so red circuits are on half the belt using a priority to split it off and then just side loading. And then the other half of the belt, utilizing the uh, behavior of inserters always inserting on the far side, putting blue circuits over here, and then utilizing the nice underground side loading trick to make sure that only blue circuits side load on uh, because these basically hit the flap and these don't. And then it comes over. And we have, um, so it looks like we have a full blue belt of blue circuits, four belts of red circuits, and six belts of green circuits, I think, um, which comes to modules. So this is the module production area, all the module threes, there's a lot, actually. The final section here, there's uh, basically five machines, speed beacon as well, um, all making module, uh, module threes. So five machines making module threes, pretty dang fast. Uh, you can see they're holding a, a whole chest, essentially. 4.4K is a whole chest worth of modules threes of each type. And then a few module uh, efficiency modules, 100, uh, probably just for use here and there, maybe for power armors and stuff. Uh, and then some landfill here, gears. I'm not gonna look super close at this because this is the make everything. This isn't even the main science production. Uh, nuclear fuel, some artillery stuff here. So like a lot of ammo, uh, military production in this area for general use and obviously the artillery uh, or yeah, artillery, um, and then some low density structures, uh, engines, all that stuff coming down. We're making all kinds of types of belts. So this is kind of the actual mall hub of just make everything in this little section. And then uh, this continues down, and they're making you know their their high end stuff, their logistic network stuff, their beacons, uh, the nuclear reactors, you know, power armor equipment and stuff like that down here. Um, so pretty cool. And then this is, if you couldn't tell already, this is basically entirely belt and train based. There's a few bots. Uh, now there are a lot of bots in the network, but there's not really many bots that actually do work. You'll notice there's very few logistic chests. Uh, mainly it's just for uh, dumping the make everything materials into so you can easily request them like yourself. It is the main purpose of that. Um, so that's the make everything, which e even in and of itself is really quite large. Uh, and then if we just take a look, some cool uh, perimeter walls here. These aren't really dragon's teeth, but it kind of is the same principle. Uh, just stops the biters from like running directly into your main wall here and helps the turrets um, kill them. Doing uh, laser turrets and gun turrets with uranium ammo, which is pretty cool. Uh, not nice combo there. And now we're going to come down to the train bus. And uh, we have the inbound lane um, on the bottom. So this is right-hand drive. And then we actually have the delivery stations and then the outbound lane above them, which makes sense because it's a pull-through system. So the trains need to actually leave you know, above the stations. Um, and we're just going to sit here and watch this for a second. I'm going to take a quick sip of water. All right, so let's start. Um, they have, you'll notice there's actually a very uniform uh, good thing going on here. So there's three sections of the same thing. So really we only need to look at one, we'll just kind of browse across all of them, but uh, three of them are all the same. So each one is actually a science section. Uh, it goes in order, uh, red science, green science, military, blue, yeah, blue, purple, I would assume. Yep, high tech over here. Yep, and space science here, and then it just starts over. So three seconds of this, each one doing 1,200 a minute, because we are making 3,600 science per minute. But let's start at the origin with the train. So red science, nicely marked. Uh, we have two trains delivering, and this is all you need for red science. You have iron, ore, so it's all coming from ore, iron ore, copper ore, 
same type of deal we saw at the make everything where it's kind of an inline stacker for each type. These run underneath. Now they are unloading a bunch of belts even though they're actually only uh, bringing a couple of them into the main production area. Uh, so these run up, come in. Uh, so we're doing local smelting here. Not very much of it because it's all uh, beacon and module and rent science really does not take very many materials in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and then we're making red science here. It looks like potentially an odd number of them. Yeah, saw 13 of them, I think. Yeah, 13 red science machines, but this section is doing 1,200 a minute. And uh, all productivity, again, just to mention, which is good productivity and all the stuff. Sending the red science up here. Uh, now sticking through chests, uh, which I do find interesting. That maybe this is kind of just an extra buffer here. And this comes through and then is loaded onto another train station and brought somewhere else. We haven't actually looked at the labs yet. We'll get to that near the end. It's something pretty cool. So this is loaded onto the train and sent off. In terms of this train setup, it pulls in. So, so we have a interesting. So we actually have two. So maintenance. Okay, so each one of these has a maintenance station is what that is. So that's pretty cool. Basically a pack station. Uh, good to have that in each section. Uh, so this loads, again, a 1-4 train. And then green science, again, just inputting the two materials, iron and copper. Bring two belts up. And this actually merges into one belt. And we have very little copper smelting here. We don't need a ton. A lot of iron smelting because you need it for all the gears. And then this has quite a few uh, green circuit machines. 16 here. Again, they are slower than, red, than the red science. So you do need more. And uh, we're making the belts and inserters locally. Now these are actually not be or not moduled, which is interesting. They opted to not do it that way, which is fine. I mean, still getting away with just two and then one. Uh, pretty standard, nothing like super crazy to explain within this build. Uh, just some underground stuff here, gears, iron, and circuits directly underneath here. Outputting comes up. Same deal, loaded on a 1-4 train, and then sent off to the labs. And then we have military science, so we do, of course, need more materials for this. We have iron, copper, and then also coal and stone here. And you can see these, these sections are getting bigger and bigger. And as another train race goes by, uh, sending two belts of everything up again. Copper is combined back down into one, and this is... So this is interesting to me. Uh, they're sending two belts up and then turning it into three belts. Uh, now they may only need two belts and then they just need it to go to three different locations would be my guess as to why they're doing this. Uh, I mean the base seems to be running pretty well so th there's not too much to question here I suppose uh, in terms of if it works or not but uh, th yeah that would be my guess is that it just needs to go to three different locations uh, and this one's actually only half the belt. So we have the iron smelting here and then this one's loading here. So iron smelting, steel smelting, again, everything made locally, just straight from ores. Uh, these are backed up because we're not doing military science, so this one is just completely stopped. Uh, but they are making everything in here, the ammo, grenades, and walls. And then they have 13 uh, military science packs here, keeping in mind that military does produce two science per, per production cycle. Again, 1-4 train, loaded up, good to go. Um, now there's a condition here, and enable, uh, this is gonna be the case on all these. Um, I would assume the same amount for all of them. Yeah, so uh, as soon as it gets to or equals 32,000, it's going to shut off the station, uh, is my understanding here. And I'm not sure. Yeah, so, or maybe it turns it on. I always get this confused. I think maybe it would turn it on once it hits or gets above 32,000. Um, but, well, this one's off, so let, let's take a look here. This one's off, yeah. So, as soon as it hits that amount, it'll turn it on. Basically, they're just trying to prevent the train from coming and sitting here forever when there's not actually enough materials to fill up the train. And then, so, so that's uh, military science. Let's move on to blue science. Blue science needs 
iron, copper, coal, oil, and water. These uh, pretty big one for oil trains. I say pretty big just because usually oil trains, at least when I build them, aren't as big. Uh, but they are keeping the size very standard here, which is which is nice. And another thing of note that I didn't really mention before that's pretty uh, pretty interesting about this to me, at least, is very... I want to... Uh, Wow, so much traffic. Uh, it's almost, in a way, very simplistic rail setup, but not at the same time. Like, this is just very, like, kind of... Uh, I, I don't want to say beginner level, because obviously you know what they're doing. It's just very, very simple. Cross, chain signals across, chain signals before. Like, this is, this is kind of like the kind of junction I would build when I first started playing, is, you know, just you know, just rails, just crossing all these other rails, just straight across, um, but it works. I, I don't know, I just thought it was interesting, just very simplistic uh, rail setup, and you know, sometimes that's better. Sometimes, if you know what you're doing, just building a very simplistic setup can actually work for the better, and this would be one of those cases, I would say. Now, I am still, I'm going to lean even more towards the fact that when they wrote their synopsis for me, that that was like before they did more work on the save potentially and then sent me the save because they said they had some train traffic problems um, and I'm just not really seeing any to be honest with you everything seems to be running absolutely fantastic from what I can tell uh, so I mean that's good that we're not having those problems uh, so anyway back to blue science comes up making the engines smelting oil production here actually very small oil production because only the amount needed for the science you know no uh no, no massive oil bill for the whole base which is actually nice this really helps simplify the, the piping and the liquid uh flow throughput issues you may run into normally and then uh making all the stuff locally here sharing about engines and steel actually so you can, another example of having the input belt be the same as the output belt, that can actually work really well um, in a lot of cases, as long as you're careful with it and, and you know, separate it out like you're supposed to. Uh, then this comes up, obviously a lot of blue science here, just because it's, it's slow and it only produces, you know, produces two, but it's 24 seconds. And then load it on the train, same dealio here, same setup on the train station. Purple science. Ton of materials coming in here, basically every material. Two iron, in fact. Need all that for the uh, rails. And then copper, coal, stone, oil, and water. Lots of water, too. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so we have a ton of iron here. We have, uh, it looks like, we have 12 belts of iron ore coming in here. And four belts of copper, which both of these is a lot more than the previous builds. And then four belts of stone. All this is really going to be for the rails, at least the iron and the stone. Uh, and then a fairly large oil build here for the plastic, for the red circuits. So all this iron is in here. We're also making a bunch of steel. You need a ton of steel for the rails. And actually, basically almost all this is going to steel. And you can see here... The rails, the rails are the rails are really one of the hardest parts, I think, for a lot of people, including myself, for science. So, using every space available, essentially here to input and output um, everything needed for these rails, uh, using some belt weaving techniques as well. But they are supplying it. I don't see any machines running out. It is backed up here. This one may be a little close. It looks like this one's stopping every once in a while. Uh, and then, of course, all the circuits for the speed mod or for the productivity module ones, and then more for the furnaces, plus the steel for the furnaces and the brick. So between the stone for the rails and the stone brick for the furnaces and the steel for both, you know that that's where all the iron and stone's going. Uh, and then we have uh, well, that's the wrong button. We don't want to cut. We have uh, like twenty-ish, twenty-one machines making. Uh, purple science would make sense. Same deal on the station. High tech science. We have iron, copper, coal, oil, and water. Fair bit of both here. Uh, we have eight lanes of iron, it looks like, and eight lanes of copper. All coming up here very nicely. Very similar smelting setups, you can see. Um, 
basically identical smelting setups throughout the builds, just scale up or down depending on the demand for the, the science. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then uh, oil here, making some red circuits, coming up making green circuits, same type of build we saw earlier. And then the low density structures, which are also fairly hard to keep up with, um, eating the majority of the copper here, that and the circuits. Some, uh, a lot of belt, again, belt weaving, uh, kind of, you know, turning, uh, weaving, backtracking around to, to get where it needs to go. Very, very compact builds. They have made these extremely compact. To be able to make 1,200 seconds per minute in, in this size of a thing, which I know this is big, but still, um, this is really compact. This certainly could have been a lot bigger. Um, I think they did try fairly hard to make this compact, which is good. And then... Uh, high tech science obviously making robo frames and engines electric engines there all productivity modeled where possible and speed beacon all eight beacons i think that every single build in this map is eight beacons i don't recall seeing a 12 beacon build and we come up i'm not again i'm not entirely sure this just seems like an extra little buffer area potentially and then comes up lows in the station same condition and finally, space science, which is probably the biggest. We have one lane of iron, two lanes of copper, coal, oil, two, double oil, um, and double water, actually. And this is not something you see a lot, is, is training water. This, it, it's obviously they didn't really have a ton of water um, close enough to do this locally. Uh, and this works. You know, training water for something like nuclear is very difficult. Some people do it. It's very, very hard, though. Uh, for science, it certainly can work, and it's not something you see very often. So there are a lot of very unique things in this map, which I really, really like. Now, I suppose we're having a little bit of a train jam here, but, yeah, I mean, there is a bit of a one here. And to be honest, I'm not sure this can really be avoided just due to the nature of, like, what this is. You know, because these trains have to leave. So, you know, they're going to have to stop the traffic. There's not really, <laughs> there's not really um, much, you know, much to do about that. You know, they're all going to their respective lanes. So the, you know, the stone, oil, and water are all exiting here, going to the top lane because that's their lane. And then iron is going to this lane or this lane because that's theirs. And then copper goes to this one or this one because that's theirs. Uh, but just due to the nature of this, you can't really, I can't think of a good way to do this where you, where you don't have all these crossings. I mean, maybe if you made trains that can pull back out the way they came and then have some weird rails going the other direction below it or something, which sounds almost more of a mess to me. Uh, so, you know, this cannot really be avoided too well with this system. Um, so all things considered, my point with this is, you know, all things considered, I think it's running very, very well. Um, it's not like something is just completely broken. Um, this is just kind of the nature of it. Anyway, back to the build. Uh, we have a ton of copper lanes here. We have 12 copper lanes and eight iron lanes coming in for uh, rockets, which of course are very expensive. Ton of oil here, lots and lots of oil making the solid fuel for rocket fuel. All in line here, uh, meaning that like it's, you know, Product one, two, three, all made one after the other in the correct succession rather than like uh, solid fuel and then rocket fuel right next to it, right inserting or something. Uh, so this all comes up, a lot of rocket fuel. It's very slow. Uh, low density structures, of course, you need a lot of those. Accumulated solar panels, radar for the satellites. A lot of belt, it's kind of spaghetti here. Again, can't really be avoided just with the way everything needs to run in and out of here. Um, this definitely took some doing on their part, though. You know, just trying to follow some of these belts is, whew, it's a bit of a chore. You know, <laughs> trying to figure out where everything's going, some side loading going back the other way here. Overall, um, pretty cool. I like it that it's like spaghetti inside of an organized build, in a sense. Um, you know, circuits, just so many circuits. You need a ton of circuits. For this because you need to be module ones for the rocket control units uh, and then we're loading um, two rockets again 
If you're doing a thousand seconds per minute or more, you need more than one rocket because one rocket, when you count the animation, can't actually launch a rocket per minute. Um, so we have to have two. And then one of them just doesn't work all the time. And then again, loading this up, same dealio with the uh, science. And then these are just repeated. So exact same builds here, just gonna scan through. So section two here, and then section three here, all the way over. And then we have a little bit of a, uh, looks like a wall repair section here, actually. It's pretty cool to look at. Don't see this super often. Um, maybe it is, and I just don't notice it. But same wall design here. This is a very, very fortified base. <laughs> Extremely fortified base, which is good, because obviously biters are on. And now, where are the labs? Well, this is the fun part. The labs are kind of hidden. If we follow these rails, so all the trains run up onto this top main line here, which is a very simple two lane system, one lane one way, one lane the other way. And they all turn and go up this way. And they go on a little trek here, a little adventure over up to this main line, <laughs> do, do a quick switch over here and come up this way some artillery split offs, we go all the way up, and the labs are hidden inside of a nice forest here. And this is really, really interesting. I, I just, you know, I would never play with trees this high because it would drive me insane. Um, so props to them for being able to handle this. And it sounds like they like it. In their synopsis, they said they do like maps uh, that, that have this many trees. And it does make for a very cool aesthetic. You know, just seeing these lines, these belts of science packs running through you know, the forest area here, all these trains kind of hidden within the trees. You know, it's like, it's like the, the science lab hidden in the, hidden in the trees, <laughs> hidden in the leaves, you know? Um, so all the, all the sciences are delivered here. Another wall kind of repairing drop off a uh, bit of combinators that I don't, I haven't really looked at, uh, but I would assume it has to do with requesting things and turning the station on and off potentially uh, when it needs it. And then eight beacons on the labs, productivity modeled, thankfully. And there are a lot of labs here. There are 222 labs. That's a lot. That is a lot. Um, now, interestingly, it looks like there is a lack of purple science. They're not actually using all the labs. Uh, we are making 3k purple science. Um, they're only consuming about five to 600 a minute, which is interesting. Um, so production is way higher than consumption. Obviously there is none on this belt, so there isn't, it's not being provided fast enough. Um, part of the problem, it looks like well, this train is sitting here because the station's off because it's not reached its 32,000 purple science. Uh, and if we if we come over to the purple science over here, uh, we, we did notice that it had some production issues. Um, so this train stop is off. Uh, it's almost to its correct amount. And you can see science load um, that they're using the, the science pack symbol to represent, you know, in the name. And they're sharing station names. So th this totally works. I, I was hoping that this would be the case because uh, it would make sense to me. Um, and it just saves some hassle. All the science load are the same between the sections. So the trains can just go to whichever one's on, which is really nice. Uh, you know, so like this military science is on, this military science is on, and this one's on. So it can go to any of them. Uh, whereas, you know, if you have like, it looks like they're kind of all on or off at the same time. Uh, but if you had, for example, like blue science on here and the others off, it'll just go to this one because uh, they just share the name. So it'll just go to whichever one is on. Um, and, and they're actually doing a potentially similar thing here. Oh, no, these are just full. It looks like they're using train stop limits. So that that's good. That they're using that as well. It looks like three on basically all, uh, two on the ores potentially and three three here it actually looks like they're they're different per build which would make sense because you know different builds say different amounts you know five 
the iron on this one. I'll back, back up to the labs. Uh, so the trains will just sit here until the station, one of the stations opens up, which one should soon. That other one was at 27,000. Um, so it's just going to wait here until a station opens up. And then we'll send packs in and these will all be consumed. Now, if we take a quick look here, uh, we're nearing the end, but if we take a quick look, I think rails were the issue, at least on one of the builds. This build seems to be running pretty good. It, it looks like it is stopping a bit with rail, and rail is just really difficult. Uh, from the looks of it, there's no shortage of supply to the rail. From what I can tell, it looks like... It honestly looks like it's just an output problem which is not surprising <laughs> with rail. Um, I was going to say they could productivity, they could speed model this game productivity. Um, but I think it's an output problem, which is really, really difficult to handle. Like that is probably one of the biggest issues with the rail production for this is the output. It's just so hard to get thing, like get the belt full and get the inserters to output the amount it needs to. Uh, if they had room, I would say like add more and have a second belt coming in or something. Um, I mean, they could potentially maybe add some on the back here and then have it come in the other direction to supply, like, the last two machines. So that's a possibility because it doesn't look like it's bottlenecked on the input at all. For the most part, the input's actually backed up. Um, it's just really an output issue. Uh, so that's something to consider. Maybe if they could route belts, they could, like, put one up here. There is room, I believe, and then just have it run down and supply, like, the last two machines or something. That's a possibility if you really want to get creative because uh, it looks like Purple Science is the bottleneck here. Um, and, and it's not due to an input, and it doesn't look to be due to any sort of train jams. Like, there's a little bit of train stopping here and there, but that's not what's causing the purple science issues. Uh, and honestly, guys, I think that's going to do it. We looked at everything. You know, if we look at the whole map, this is a very large map. Uh, tons of trees, obviously, tons of biters. And these junctions are just magnificent. I, I can't even, I can't even tell you. I just... I looked at this, I got on the map, and I was like, I, I looked at, we started over here, and I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty crazy, and I'm like, this isn't really the whole base, and I looked over here, and I'm like, oh, wow, this is cool, and then I scrolled over the rail, and I was like, holy crap, this is, <laughs> I saw these junctions, and uh, I just sat here and watched them for like 10 minutes before I even started the video, um, just having these, I mean, talk about a junction of doom. You do not want to attempt to cross. This is absolutely like playing Frogger. Um, I, I don't know how you possibly cross this without dying if you, if you did it in one, like without stopping in the middle. Um, so, very, very cool junctions. I like these little, so, I mean, it's a roundabout. I'm not a fan of roundabouts, but it's not like used for all the throughput. It's just for a quick, like, to turn around whichever direction it needs to go for the few trains that go up here. Um, and you can see, I mean, this is a lot of rail, guys. This is a ton of rail that goes here. I wish we could see rail placed. We can't look at the rail produced or consumed because it's obviously way thrown off from science. Um, but I would imagine there's a ton of rail placed on this map. And the last thing to look at, how many trains do we have? We have over 500 trains on this map. It's actually not as many as I thought. I thought it would be like over 700 or so. Um, so not the most trains we've seen, uh, but... It's up there. It's probably top three amount of trains we've seen in these in the Space Tour series. Um, these outposts, they just like spread out kind of in the middle of these forests here. is a very cool look, I, I must admit. You know, these uh, artillery outposts, the, the mining outposts, you know, all the way out in the forest in the middle of nowhere here. Um, speed beaconing the oil and such. Uh, the resources are bumped up. That, that was, I, it was basically default settings except the trees being bumped up and the resource amount of uh, richness and stuff being bumped up in size. But other than that, vanilla standard, uh, incredible base. I, I want to give a huge thank you to Karad uh, Karad for submitting this. Um, I know it was a little while until I got to it, but I'm so glad I did because I, I, I wanted to see a train bus base. And I didn't know we were going to get one. And this is the first one we've got, I believe. And uh, it was well worth, <laughs> well worth the wait. It was, it, this is such a cool base. Every base I look at is really, really cool. But this base is unique. You know, when I say if you guys have a base to submit, 
um, you know, if, if it's unique or something. I'm not saying that any of the other bases weren't deserving or any bases in the future aren't deserving. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying, you know, bases I have looked at in the past, there are definitely similar themes throughout the bases. Like, you know, this is an all belt base. This is an all bot base. This is, you know, an aesthetically pleasing base, which is cool. I mean, those are great. I love looking at those. But this base is truly different than what we've seen. We haven't seen a trained bus base, at least not this scale before in this series. I don't think we've seen a base that, you know, the per you know where the person decided to build a mega base in basically a jungle map, <laughs> you know? Uh, we haven't really seen a rail system quite like that. We've seen similar ones with like the dedicated lines, but not quite to this scale or in this um, form before. And uh, man, it is just so cool to look at, folks. This is, this is really, really amazing. Um, extremely well done, Karad. And in terms of your bottlenecks, uh, really, I think it's I think it's those dang rails and the purple science. And I think if you fix that, you would be good to go. It does not. I do not really see any noticeable. Uh, tra like there are train backups, but this is but that's not what's causing the problem. Um, it's uh, it's your it's your rails, uh, and I don't blame you because those things are a pain. Um, if you're still playing this base, I know it's been a while, but if you're still playing this base, my suggestion, if you could fit it, wrap your belts around, which I know would be very difficult. You may have to go on the outside or something, which would throw off the aesthetic, but, um, if you could place one more rail builder, like, right up in here or something, and supply the last two machines, or even the last one machine, of purple science, I think you'd be golden, honestly. I think that'd fix your problem. Not that more problems wouldn't arise, but still, uh... That's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Um, absolutely fantastic base. Thank you again for submitting it. And uh, I very much look forward to the next base tour I do. And uh, I believe that will do it. If you did enjoy it, a like is really appreciated. It helps other people find this base and maybe, you know, hopefully inspire them. And uh, just help show off Krod's amazing work here. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to keep up with all future content. And I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.